and will play left field. And then Will Myers bats second. He's back and right. James Loney over at first base. The middle of the order for Joe Madden is Evan Longoria at third. Ben Zobris will be at second base, the switch hitter. And Desmond Jennings in center. Bottom three, the designated hitter, Delman Young. Yunel Escobar, the shortstop batting eighth. And catching and batting ninth is Jose Molina. And on the mound is John Lackey. Well, John Lackey certainly turned his year around. Beat. Don't be deceived by that 10 and 13 record because it's a product of some lack of luck and run support. He's been really good at home, 2.47 ERA. And of course, he's looking to ride the momentum that John Lester had in pitching. And Joe, how about the Red Sox defense today? Going with the same outfit they had out there yesterday. Gomes, Ellsbury, and Victorino from left to right. You see four gold gloves out there collectively between Ellsbury and Victorino. And around the horn, Middlebrooks, Drew, Pedroia, and Napoli. And David Ross will do the catching tonight for Lackey. Ross signed in the offseason. An excellent catch and throw receiver. Really does a good job cutting down on the running game. And a big decision for John Farrell for this game on who would catch John Lackey. David Ross has not caught Lackey since May. Matter of fact, you got to go back to May 9th, and he's only caught him twice. Salta Lamacchia had a good day yesterday, but Ross is the call tonight, getting his first start of this postseason. And we're ready for baseball tonight. De Jesus leads off. Lackey's first pitch is down and in for ball one, and away we go. One of the things you're going to see from both pitchers is a lot of emotion, especially out of Lackey. He wears his motion on his sleeves. He's aggressive with all his pitches, and he's aggressive with the energy that he's taken to this mound. Three and four postseason all time. Home plate umpire tonight is Eric Cooper. Crew chief is Dana DeMuth. He's at first base, part of the six man umpiring crew in place. Umpires hate when you say things like this because they call the strike zone as it's supposed to be. But Eric Cooper, by all accounts, is a pitcher friendly umpire. Let's see if that holds true here tonight. You know, the other thing to watch in this early part of the game, not he's not pitched in 10 days. Okay, you have your side sessions, you haven't had the adrenaline pumping for 10 days. So early on, look for his feel and touch to be what he hopes it to be, but 10 games is 10 days is a lot to not be on the mound. Missed all of 2012, had the Tommy John ligament replacement surgery at the end of the 11th season that knocked him out for 2012. And is kind of the symbol of this resurgence by the Red Sox. It was a guy that got crossways with the fans and the media, and he wasn't healthy. John Farrell made a phone call to him this offseason. Said, time to wipe the slate clean. And his arm is back and healthy again. He had a good year as he walks David De Jesus, and now in steps Will Myers. So impressed with Will Myers after the game yesterday at 22 years of age and answering all of the questions very calmly, just owned it. Said, I made a mistake, won't happen again. And here he is back in the lineup batting second. Another thing to watch if the Rays want to. 36 stolen bases against Lackey. Six more than anybody else closest to him was Scott Feldman. It's another reason why Ross is back there tonight to help cut down on any chance of running. Joe Madden gave Will Myers some great advice about tonight's game. He said they're not going to forget here. They're going to be on you. They're going to be chanting your name. And if anybody gives you any grief, just smile at him. Yeah, he uh, did a good job last night. Answered all the questions outside the Tampa Bay Rays clubhouse. And, you know, the talk about Will Myers with his teammates and with Joe Madden is that he's a very confident young player. Confidence has never been an issue, but you could certainly see that it affected him yesterday, the misplay in right field. It wasn't the only mistake the Rays made in yesterday's game. But Will Myers, since his call up on June 18th, and he made his debut at Fenway, he has been their most productive hitter. Big swing and a miss. The Rays, since Myers was promoted to the major leagues, 
in mid June 18 games over 500 and he has 53 runs batted in since his call up and that leads this Tampa Bay ball club. So he is a big part of what they are doing now offensively and doing in the future. Myers fouls one back. Yesterday, fourth inning, started a string of mistakes by the Tampa Bay Rays, but this was the one that opened the door for the Red Sox. Myers inexplicably peels off the fly ball from Ortiz. Ortiz credited with a double. The Red Sox would go on to score five runs in that inning. A bizarre play, to say the least. Things for the Rays, knowing they face Lackey a bunch, but one thing he has done this year with two strikes, he has been tough to get hits off of. 153 average with two strikes, and that speaks volumes to the kind of stuff he has and put away stuff he can have once he gets two strikes on him. A swing and a miss. Down he goes on strikes. And the first out for John Lackey. As we send it down to Rachel Nichols. Guys, talking about Myers' mindset, your fans were on him from the moment he was introduced here pregame, but he did something interesting afterward. He heard all the boos, he heard all the fake cheers. He walked right over here and signed some autographs for some Red Sox fans on his way back to the dugout. You mentioned Joe Madden telling him to smile. Evan Longoria told me that he pulled Myers aside and said, they're not going to just chant your name in this game. They will probably chant your name in every game at Fenway for the rest Rest of your career, he said, you just got to move on. But guys, Madden caught him looking at tape of the mistake again in the clubhouse today. He said, stop it. Go forward today. Well, that's just something that uh, this team has done so well. You know, they've got veteran leadership. The coaches talk to their players. And uh, I ran into one of the coaches after the game, and he told me exactly that. That's how they took care of it. It was over, and the kid did a great job. Yeah, it wasn't just... Will Myers had made mistakes yesterday. They had a team full of them. Well, and the Rays were glad to be able to get on the field today. There was a full batting practice for both teams. Their outfielders were all able to get some work. Very tricky Fenway Park. Showed up yesterday. And Loney shoots one to right, a base hit. So James Loney elevated to the three spot in the order with the right handed starter. Been a terrific hitter all year for the Rays. And now Tampa Bay with two on and just one out. This Tampa team's got some good numbers in their lineup against Lackey in their career. In fact, while he has a winning record in his career against Tampa Bay at 12 and 7, his last four starts, he's 0 and 3 with an ERA over 7. So they've got a lot of guys in the lineup tonight that are very comfortable against him. Now Evan Longoria in the cleanup spot. Tonight, 0 for 2 yesterday with a walk. On the first pitch, a bouncer. Step on the bag at third. Little goes to first and a double play. Inning over. 5-3 double play to end it. Now Shane Victorino. Yesterday, 3 for 4, 2 RBIs. He had a stolen base and a run scored. He's been a terrific postseason performer. Most of that coming as a Philadelphia Philly. 32 RBIs and an 803 OPS in 47 postseason games. And the Rays ace on the mound, David Price. Well, David Price, like I mentioned, 6 and 1 with a 1.88 ERA at Fenway. His last 10 has been pretty good. Boston only hitting 167 off of him this year. Look, Boston loves the fastball. Best average against fastball. But this is a different fastball from the left hand side. And uh, for Tampa Bay, they're hoping he gets this, they get the same kind of performance that they got in uh, Texas. Jacoby Ellsbury will lead off for Boston. Got a couple of hits yesterday. He was the last Red Sox player to have a hit in their starting lineup. He ended up with two of them in his final two trips to the plate. The 298 during the regular season. Just a dominating offensive performance yesterday by Boston. And even though Joe the door was opened a little bit by the Rays, Boston took advantage of it. They were just red hot in this. I think it was Johnny Gomes said uh, once the momentum really shifted to them after those errant plays in the fourth, the Red Sox offense just seized the moment and they really were loose. Elsberry, little flare, shallow right, gonna fall a base hit. And it starts with a single for the Red Sox.
here's the defense for the Tampa Bay Rays. De Jesus in left field has not played left field at Fenway Park in five years. He's joined by Jennings and Myers, Longoria, Escobar, Zobrist, and Loney from third to first. And behind the plate tonight, he did not start last night, but Jose Molina will do the catching for David Price. Shane Victorino with Ellsbury at first. And chance of Myers raining down on the Rays right fielder already. A couple of rounds of that for him. Now we'll see if the Red Sox, who have done a lot of running this season, and three particular players that do most of the running. The stolen base game has been a big part of what they do. Jacoby Ellsbury had 52 during the regular season and caught just four times. Two months ago today, Brian, was the last time a catcher threw out a Boston base dealer. That was Jason Castro of the Astros who got Dustin Pedroia. That was August 5th. And they have a string of 41 straight as a team. Well, we saw David Price against the Texas Rangers cut down a couple of base runners. The Rangers wanted to run as well. Price didn't let them. When they did get on, he picked two off. And then he kept the bases clean for the most part in that complete game gym against Texas in the tiebreaker game on Monday. And we talked about how aggressive Texas is on the base paths. Boston, a similar team, but David Price did a great job of kind of diffusing that against the Rangers. You have to do if you don't have a great move as a left hander, vary your times and don't show your move that often. And I thought he did a nice job with a quick step off throw that picked off one of the Rangers. He varied his times. He's not super slow to home plate by any magic, but the fact that the catchers for Tampa have had trouble throwing out runners, I thought that set the tone against a team that loves to run in the Rangers as well. Yeah, the Rays third worst in the American League at trying to throw out base stealers. Two balls and a strike on Victorino. Ellsbury starting with a single. A little flare into right. And a check on Ellsbury. We saw Ellsbury steal one last night, too, where he was just allowed to get a walking lead. And that's the way he likes to do it. If you don't make him stop, he'll just keep going. That's one of the things about the Red Sox this season. They go from worst to first, but they're not a club that sits back and waits for the three run home run. They are aggressive. We saw aggressive base running yesterday. It doesn't just show up in the stolen base numbers, and those numbers are very good, but we saw Stephen Drew score from first on a line drive off the monster. Johnny Gomes had a mad dash on an infield hit, scoring from second base. They will take chances on the base paths. Red Sox scored 12 runs yesterday, did not hit one out of the park. There he goes. Pitches a strike, throws second, is leading into center field, and Ellsbury is on the run. He got a great jump and a bad throw that short hopped, and it'll be a stolen base and an error, and the Red Sox in business quickly. He got a great jump. There's no chance for Molina, who didn't get the best pitch to throw on. And then a sidearm delivery sails into center field. What will go unnoticed is that Victorino doesn't mind hitting with two strikes because he took a strike right there, knowing that his runner getting to second, he'd be able to do his part to get him to third. Now all he has to do is hit a ground ball, and it's one to nothing. And the Rays play it back so early in this game in the first. Victorino, very good contact hitter. Trying to put one in play. Victorino is playing with a sore thumb. And he's been nursing that injury since September 20th. That's when he injured that right thumb. Yesterday delivered with three hits. Had some hamstring problems earlier this season. And as of August 4th, he is no longer a switch hitter. Every now and then you'll see him back right-handed or left-handed against a right-hander. But a move point with Price on the mound tonight. And a little slow roll into Longoria. Ellsbury drops the throw is in time, and Ellsbury retreats. And a good job by Longoria to get the first out. Well, that's about the only position he couldn't score on a ground ball. Yeah. And we were just talking about 
Victorino and his OPS and his career in the postseason and what a good job he does. And I think that was a good point you made, John, about him taking a pitch to allow Ellsbury to steal. Good pitch by Price to keep that run from scoring by getting the ball in on him. So the first out for David Price, and here is Dustin Pedroia. Two hits yesterday, scored a couple of runs, and he had the first hit. And as Joe mentioned in the open, the big hit that opened the door a little bit. So that ball's in the right center, should be plenty deep to score the run. Jennings makes the catch, and Ellsbury flies to the plate. One nothing Boston. Sack fly on the eye by Pedroia. He said last night, Dustin Pedroia is the guy that drives this team. He's the engine. He got the rally started last night, yesterday afternoon, rather, in the fourth inning. Drives in the first run tonight with the sacrifice fly on the first pitch he sees from Price. So Price gives up a first inning run, the costly error, the throwing error by Molina behind the plate. And that sets up the run. So the Rays continuing to struggle defensively. This was a historically good defensive team this year, Tampa Bay. As Ortiz takes a ball inside. Only the Orioles committed fewer errors than the Rays this season. The Orioles set a, a major league record for fewest errors. Ortiz in the right field, well hit. Back is Myers looking up and she's gone. Big Poppy goes big fly. A solo shot. It's 2 nothing Boston. the seats and a quick start for the Red Sox two on the board against David Price in the first and now Napoli Dick Poppy just a 216 career average against David Price prior to that swing that was a no doubter career home run number 13 in the postseason for David Ortiz Ortiz hit 30 during the regular season Having it over a hundred. David Price's uh, game plan early on was to pitch everybody. It seems like in he went into Ellsbury, who broke his bat and got a single. He tried to go in the first pitch, which he did to David Ortiz. Left hand was only hit 189 against him this year. He's been awfully tough against them, and yet. Two hits this inning, both the lefties. All in two strikes on Napoli. Drove in a run with a hit yesterday. And a swing and a miss. David Price strikes him out. Inning is over, but it was a productive one for the Sox. Tees. A solo homer. Two of the first for Boston. Austin with a quick start tonight. Two on the board. Sack fly RBI by Petroya. Ortiz a home run. Lackey giving some run support as we start the second inning. Ben Zobris leads off. He'll be followed by Desmond Jennings and then Delman Young. And Zobris pulls one foul. Switch hitting second baseman. The thing about Boston right now, they have had nine innings at the plate. Of course they didn't bat in the bottom of the ninth last night. They've scored 14 runs in their nine turns at the plate. 14 unanswered. Three big innings yesterday. Batted around twice yesterday. And 
put a quick two spot on the board against the Rays ace at the bottom of the first. Oddly, they only had two guys that didn't get RBIs yesterday, and they each got RBIs in the first tonight. <laughs> Feeling a little left out, you're saying? Yeah. Seven of the nine in the batting order for the Red Sox yesterday drove in runs. All nine of them had hits. Lackey falling behind Zobris. And there is ball four, and the very patient Ben Zobris draws the walk. Well, a reminder that the MLB Fan Cave is coming back in 2014. Players, celebrities, concerts, and more. You can be a part of next season's team. Just go to MLBFanCave.com and apply now. Lead runner on for the Rays. Zobris walks. Here is Desmond Jennings. Against right handed starters, Jennings hits down in the order. Tonight he's in the sixth spot. Typically leads off against lefties. One thing Tampa is as a team, which is pretty amazing when you dissect their year and as a team, they have the lowest chase percentage in all of baseball. So they're only chasing 22% of the time as a team so outside that they don't really expand the zone too well so they're pretty good we all talk about Boston and their patience and the way they work the pitches per plate appearance Tampa's not bad themselves and, and they fit a nice little year into this year where they've scored some runs there's a good case of David Ross veteran catcher going out to help him kind of reboot you know to get a new start here because this is a guy that doesn't walk many people Lackey only walked 40 in 189 innings this year and had a Four to one strikeout to walk ratio. There's our Chevrolet pitch tracks. Focusing on the pitch selection by Lackey. And like Lester, he throws a cut fastball, and that counts in the fastball category. And that's mostly what he goes with when he's right. Two balls and a strike on Desmond Jennings. And it goes to three and one. Another thing Lackey did during his rehab for his arm after the Tommy John surgery, he really did a good job of working himself back into shape, too. He's a lot trimmer than he was two years ago when he was pitching. And Lackey bristles at that notion that he wasn't in shape the first time around, but he certainly, through the rehab process, rehab his body dropped about 20 pounds. And he's come back. He says it's only because his elbow is fixed and he's healthy again. The kind of year he put up. And the Red Sox are hoping he can be that horse that he was with the Angels. Full count to Jennings. Almost takes off. That ball's hit sharply into center field. It's down for a hit. And Zobrist on his way to third. So Jennings with a single. With Zobrist on the move. And the Rays threatening quickly in the second. Last thing you want to do is walk the leadoff hitter when your team has scored two runs. But right here, he had to come in to the plate with a three and two count runner going. Of course, he squares it up in the center field. And now the Rays with Delman Young at the plate. He likes to happen. Things happen quickly. Young, the designated hitter. And he swings and misses. Young hit a key home run in the wild card game on Wednesday against Cleveland. Off Danny Salazar that started the scoring for the Rays. Helped set their offense at ease. Tampa Bay enters into this series knowing it's a best of five, but they've basically been in a do or die scenario since last Sunday and had a an elimination game Sunday in the regular season against the Blue Jays. Had the same scenario in the tiebreaker game on Monday against Texas. And then, of course, the one game wild card playoff on Wednesday. And had scored first in all those games. In fact, they had a streak of 13 straight where they scored first until tonight. Scenario right here, 0 2. I talked about how tough. He is with two strikes. You've got to get something way out of the zone against Young. Going to the count. First and third for Tampa Bay. Runner goes and a high fly ball right field. 
Back is Victorino. Tagging at third is Zobrist, and he'll score without a throw. And a sacrifice fly puts Tampa Bay on the board. Delman Young with his second RBI of the postseason. And the reason I said you got to get something way out of the zone, this, this guy right here can get to anything. So you got to bounce it, throw it harder than high. 0 2 was your best chance to strike out Delman Young when you throw pitches down and way out of the zone. This is a fastball that he just stays on top of and does the job. Gets a runner in. Now it's two to one. Like I said, there's a lot of guys in the lineup that are comfortable against Lackey. And Young's one of them. He was six for 17 against him in his career. So even 0 2 behind in the count, he wasn't worried about getting jammed inside. As you know, Escobar, first ball swinging, center field to Ellsbury. And out number two. And that was a spot you could tell that. Desmond Jennings wants to run. He actually started then stopped, but Escobar giving him no chance to steal a base. Yeah, I, I think Escobar has had some good success as well. Swinging the bat, he took the first pitch, but this is a great example with two outs where at some point he's going to steal or try to steal. So that'll bring up Jose Molina. And Jennings at first. There's always a key that base runners they study what a pitcher's tendencies are what he gives away when he's going home versus coming over. It's no different than facing a pitcher at the plate and his tendencies. You're looking for every edge. One thing I've talked about it a lot when you want to try to get your catcher in the best position to throw out a runner you've got to be quicker than 1.5. To home plate 1.1 to 1.3 for a right hander would be really good. Three seconds is the common number that you try to get under between the pitcher and catcher to throw out a base deal. There goes Jennings. And a swing and a miss. Ross has thrown the second his lead. So both pitchers allowing big jumps. And we've seen a couple of steals already. Now Molina didn't have a shot in the bottom of the first. And Ross, you can see here where Jennings was by the time he caught the ball. Absolutely no shot there. Good jump by Jennings and more aggressive play by the Rays too. And what the swing does to a catcher is it's got to keep him back. He can't come out quicker to try to make that throw to second. And now Molina with two outs and he takes a strike. Everybody's got a favorite ballpark that they like to hit in. And for Jose Molina, this is it. He only hit 233 on the year, but he hit 435 in this ballpark. Molina has been a Red Sox killer this season not known for his offense but overall the entire regular season series which covers 19 games between these two teams Molina was 15 for 35 at the plate a 429 hitter against Boston. Got a chance to tie it up. Lackey wants to start over with the signals. Well, I was just handed a note here from our stat man to the stars, Aaron, who I, I'm not sure, but we may have to check this one. When Molina was with Texas back in 2010, he had a cycle here. That's correct. He is correct. That is a correct I, statement. I may have to see the video. I think everybody was laughing when he got the third on a triple. <laughs> but that was Benji Molina. <laughs> Not Jose. <laughs> but there's good family memories here at Fenway Park. Jose swings and misses. And down he goes. So Blackie is out of the inning. Gives up a run. Tampa Bay answering a two run Boston first, scoring a run in the top of the second. And here we go to the home half of the second inning with Johnny Gomes leading off. 247 during the regular season. Yesterday had the key hit in that inning following the misplay in right field. It was Gomes who doubled off the Monsters, drove in a couple of runs. He also scored a run. That was his first career hit in the postseason. And now it's deep to center field. Got some carry to it. Jennings near the wall. He's got it for the out. Johnny Gomes with a long, loud out. Boy, they had Jennings playing very deep. Against Gomes, and he made it look easy. 
It is interesting to watch the Rays defensively, Joe, when David Price is on the mound. Things are a little different with David Price. Watch what happens here. Both outfielders, of course, with the quirks of the stadium, both outfielders are going to come in. You can see him make the catch. The second baseman is going to go way out to center field and protect against the bounces that this stadium can create off the wall. Bill Middlebrooks. I think the Rays got schooled last night on how to play the wall or how to try to play the wall and get some help if the ball comes off the monster in the case yesterday and bounces over your head. But as you were about to say, uh, Brian, the Rays shift a lot. We've seen that already, but not so much with David Price because he doesn't like it He'd rather than play straight up. Joe Madden said that's his option. Yeah, and I don't blame him because some of the shifts, the way you pitch, and the velocity of which he throws a fastball, you're just giving guys a break to hit it the other way or off the end of the bat. So he likes it more traditional. He pitches according, and you can't argue with his success. There's a shot by Middlebrooks right to Escobar. Nice hands, and there is out number two on a hot shot from Middlebrooks. Today's Goodyear's superior performer. And uh, courtesy of our friends from Elias, yeah. take a look at the Red Sox in game one. All nine batters had a hit and scored a run. They only used nine offensive players. All of them had a hit. First time in Red Sox postseason history that has happened. And only the third time in MLB postseason history. The Gas House Gang Cardinals and the 36 Yankees played the Maggio's rookie year. Something yesterday that we haven't seen very much of in the postseason and seven of those nine batters driving in runs and a fast start tonight by Boston scoring twice in the first There's Stephen Drew with two away tonight John Farrell has three left handers in his batting order the only change that he made was the switch hitter salt to he's on the bench for David Ross. A couple of spots in the lineup that change with Middlebrooks and Ross. As Drew goes in the left, David De Jesus, and a one-two-three inning for David Price. Two in the books. We head to the third. Rays are coming up top of the order. Jesus will lead off for Tampa Bay. Walked in the first inning in his first postseason. Joe mentioned that De Jesus. Although he's a very accomplished outfielder, has not had a lot of experience here at Fenway Park, especially in left field. He's only played in seven career games in left field at Fenway. Six of those came in one season. He has been a good outfielder for a long time. Three different organizations this year went from the Cubs to the Nationals. In August, he was with Washington just four days. They essentially fell out of the race. And the Jesus was quickly turned around and sent to the Tampa Bay Rays. Two waiver claims on both of those trades. And now here he is in the postseason for the first time, and he is down on strikes as Lackey gets his first out. Well, don't forget, coming up next after we're done, the Tigers and the A's, Sonny Gray and Justin Verlander. Tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, MLB postseason pregame on TBS, presented by Chief. 4.30, it's the Cardinals and the Pirates game three. At 8 o'clock, the Braves and the Dodgers. That'll be another game three in Los Angeles. And the postseason show on TBS, presented by Johnny Walker, to follow at 11.30. Two games on the slate today, postseason baseball. All in the American League. Will Myers with one away. Just got a sense that this kid's going to do something today. Make up for what was a rough day yesterday. And I'm sure Rays fans hope that is the case. Myers coming to Tampa Bay in a trade with the Royals. Was part of the James Shields trade as the Royals 
tried to bolster their pitching staff, and it worked well for Kansas City. They made a run this year at a postseason berth. But Myers figures to be one of the pillars offensively moving forward. Just getting his feet wet in the big leagues this year. And a little slow roller. It'll be a tough play. Lackey winds it up, throws in time. John Lackey, nice play for a big man coming off the mound. And out number two. It's an outstanding play. Spencer with Myers getting down the line quickly. Nice barehanded grab. A good throw. I'm going to teach you to pick that up. Obviously, bare hand by your back foot and go ahead and throw. See, he good throw and got off the mound really well. And that'll bring up James Loney. Singled in the first. Rays have had men on in the first two innings. Had two on in the first before Lackey got Longoria bouncing to the double play. Lackey has been a big game pitcher in his career. He has three postseason wins. One of those was in game seven, the clincher for the Angels to win the World Series. Did that as a rookie back in 2002. Oh, and with a surgically rebuilt elbow, he says he feels like a rookie again. Owen to Deloney. Well, he's in the middle of a five year, $2 million contract that the Rays went out, or the, sorry, the Red Sox went out. Snatched him from Anaheim and first two not so good. This year has paid some dividends to the fact that the new elbow is in place. Lackey, couple of K's in a three up, three down third. Pittsburgh and Tropicana Field on Monday. David Ross will lead off for the Red Sox. Salta Lamaki has started behind the plate yesterday. Ross gets the call here tonight. Very good defensive catcher, always has been a good thrower and has had a knack. With a big moment with the bat. He missed a couple of months this year with a concussion. And John Farrell saying they missed him a great deal while he was gone. He's kind of the, another coach on the bench when he is there. And certainly he's able to bring a lot of veteran experience to the plate as well. He'll save a pitching coach a few trips to the mound. Coming over from the Atlanta Braves, signing with the Red Sox. And that backup role has good numbers, limited numbers against David Price, but has a couple of home runs against him. Good high fastball hitter. Price at a two on count. And high in the air, left field to Jesus. At the track, going to play it off the wall. And David Ross into second with a double. Boy, just a towering fly ball that is an out in most ballparks. But here in Boston, it's an extra base hit. They've been trying to pitch him away, and this is a backdoor cutter that actually catches too much of the plate. And this type fly ball that you're speaking to, Brian, is a left-hander's nightmare. The outfielder has to judge it, decide how far it's going to come down, whether or not you can catch it or play it off the wall. We've seen the last game and three innings, balls bouncing off the wall and hitting on that warning track. That warning track must be like concrete. The ball is bouncing so, so high off of it. The Jesus backed off last night or yesterday. We saw Rodriguez get burned on the bounce. The Jesus was well off the, the fence, but it still almost got out over his head. And the space between them. De Jesus checking his card for positioning with Ellsbury at the plate. Lead off double for Boston. 
That's been a little flare, and that's going to fall fair. Base hit. Ross being waved home. He'll score. Ellsbury to second. And the throw is late. It's a double and an RBI. Three to one, Boston. see two hits at least and they're going to look like bullets in the paper but his first two hits you couldn't place any perfect more perfect the third baseman Longoria's got to protect against the bunt so he's in a little bit you see him jam he doesn't even know where the ball's no. going and because he has to play in to protect against the bunt this little flare is right all the way down to the wall he can him a couple of times and you've said so often John not all good pitches turn into outs that was a good pitch right in on him well placed. One of the softest RBI doubles you'll see. Ellsbury drives it a run, makes it three to one, and here is Victorino. Rays are heads up for a potential bunt here with Victorino, and he is a good bunter. Does square it pops it up foul Loney can't get there. The Rays did a great job coming back to get a run back for David Price in the top of the second inning after he'd given up two in the bottom of the first. They kind of got some of the momentum back. And here come the Red Sox again. Bottom of the order get it they get a double and now you're in the grinder with the top of their order that does so much damage. Almost hit that injured thumb. And if you're using that right thumb, you see the, the right thumb heavily bandaged. That's kind of the guide wire on a punt. You wonder how that's affecting Victorino. Well, borderline bunting for a hit, trying to push it by the pitcher and get it closer to the second baseman. It's a tough read for Longoria, third speed at second. You see where Escobar's trying to hold him close. Gloria's got to determine when the ball, if it is bunted, what David Price is able to do. If he can cut it off, he'll hold his ground. If not, he's got to charge in and make the play. Gloria keeping a close eye on Ellsbury. And Victorino squares and takes a ball. It's going to be a very interesting postseason for Shane Victorino. Hand injuries and hitters. Don't go hand in hand, no pun intended, but it, it can be very troublesome for a hitter. He did have three hits yesterday, and I give him a lot of credit. But as the temperatures drop and it starts to get cooler and cooler, figure that thumb, it's certainly not going to get any better. Maybe taking every opportunity to drop a bunt down that he can. Ball and a strike on Victorino. And not running, swings away and shoves one through a base hit. Now hold Ellsbury. And Shane Victorino keeps on hitting despite the injury. Sometimes when that thumb injury is so bad, it affects the way you swing in terms of how you're trying, perhaps trying to pull the ball too much. Watch this. The ball on the left yesterday, solid right off the barrel, not much recall. But watch his hands here. Broken bat. Look at the vibration that went right up into his hands and especially into that thumb. And this was the swing that produced the hit. And a little bit of vibration. Didn't hit it all that sharply, but he found a hole. And Victorino now has four hits. That's oh, a great shot, that total motion camera to give you a look at. And you don't hit it on the sweet spot, how it can resonate through the hands. State the obvious. This is a huge situation for Tampa Bay. I mean, for David Price, you almost trade a run with a double play right here, but that's about it. Four is is your quota. That's that's what you can afford to give up. And Pedroia takes a strike. Pedroia swung at the first pitch his last time up, and he drove in a run with a sacrifice fly. Three hits to start the inning. Already, Brian, the third time in this series, they've had three straight hits. And none of them have 
that hit all that hard. Mr. Pedroia is unlike most modern day hitters who like to hit with a spread out stance or have a little toe tap and don't stride. This guy's got a long stride, which I think accentuates what we were talking about last night or yesterday, John, about his swing being so long and aggressive. It looks that way, I think, because of the long stride. And a bouncer, Lagoria cuts it off to second for one, and that's all they'll get. Victorino takes out Zobris to run, comes in to score. It'll be an RBI for Pedroia, and the Red Sox lead four to one. Good hard slide by Victorino, making sure there would be no double play. It was a clean slide, a good takeout. They got, they got into a little bit of a leg tangle wraparound tackle on the follow through, but that was after Zobris had already decided not to throw. Victorino out on the 5 4 put out. One gone in the inning. Two runs are in for Boston. Got a two run first. Ortiz with a solo homer in the first. Ortiz swinging away at the first pitch. in the inning for Boston. Raised with a shift on looking for the ground ball to turn two on Ortiz. And there's a strike. Price gets the call and it's 0 and 2. David Price went the distance against the Rangers on Monday. Gave up just two runs in that game. In game one, 63, the tiebreaker. And he has struggled to start this one. Well, here is our avocado All Stars moment. Ortiz, first inning with a run in, launches one into the Red Sox bullpen. First home run for the Red Sox in this series. David Price, much like he did at Texas, firm early with the fastballs, cutters, backdoor cutters, not as many changeups and curveballs. As the game went on, his touch got better, his delivery got better. So far here, Again, firm early, throwing the ball 95 plus. But the Red Sox have been able to get to him with some, some hits. They're on his fastball. Ross hit a cutter, as you pointed out. But it's like early in the count, they're sitting on the run stuff. As the season has gone on, Price just kept getting stronger and stronger. He went on the disabled list with a triceps injury, he missed six weeks. With that injury, was giving up a ton of home runs before. 14 homers in his first 15 starts, but just two over his last 11. Ortiz rips one. Loney steps on the bag, and now a rundown as Pedroia tagged out, got him on the back pocket, and a good quick tag to end the inning. Excellent defense there by the Rays to get him out of the frame, but two runs score. And it's four to one Boston. Boston scored 12 yesterday, beat the Rays 12 to two in game one. And off to a quick start tonight. Fourth inning we go, John Lackey coming off a three up, three down inning. Has retired six straight, had a couple of strikeouts in the third. And he has four Ks in this game to go along with two walks. Longoria, Zobrist, and Jennings. Back 
break up the middle and a base hit for Evan Longoria. His first hit in the division series. Well, when you look at Lackey and, and what he possesses, we talked about the firm fastball that he has. You see him in a hard slider right there at 85. He follows it up with another one that gets the double play. But this is the pitch right here. The, ball. the depth that he has at 82 miles an hour and goes straight. Down. And if he gets two strikes on you, that's more likely some of the pitches you'll get strike and swing and miss on. Facing Ben Silver is here with a man on. John Lackey is on 10 days rest. Our starters pitch every fifth day as you go through the regular season. That all gets juggled and changed once you get to the postseason. His last start was on the 24th of September with six innings. Gave four runs. Interesting that he has been much better at Fenway Park in 2013 than he has on the road. Outstanding numbers here at Fenway at 247 ERA. His home earned run average third best in the American League. So he likes this mound. That's not something you could have said a couple of years ago for John Lack. Well John was talking earlier about don't be deceived by his record at 10 and 13. He's also one of those guys that had the least amount of run support throughout baseball. The Red Sox got shut out 12 times this year. Six times when he was starting. So very little run support. This is a wealth of riches for him to have four runs to work with already. Yeah, his eight losses, two two runs or less in every one of those. And he had 14 games where it was three to five runs. So he's on the short end of some of the luck factor that plays into a pitcher's win loss record. Juan Nieves is the Red Sox pitcher coach. Zobris takes a call on strike three. A little too patient that time. And Zobris knew it. Down he goes. Lackey with strikeout number five. Just a reminder that Monday it's American League Division Series game three exclusively on MLB Network. Got the Oakland Athletics and the Detroit Tigers. Anibal Sanchez against Jared Parker. Matchup of division champs. That's Monday, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, only on MLB Network. Our buddies Matt Vaskersian and Jim Cobb will have the call. Desmond Jennings takes strike one. Lackey not able to get that shutdown inning after they got runs for him in the first inning. They got some more in the third and he's trying to get the shutdown inning now. Just of you, were you of that, John? And the big games like probably more than anything else. I thought my most important inning was the first inning. So after the first inning, if we got any runs, that was the mindset I had going out. It was getting that leadoff guy that's so huge because then you slow down the rally factor. But it was the most important thing I did when the team scored a run, especially in big games in a series because. What you do now is you start like everybody else does when you're facing a team that has either a good bullpen. You start counting outs. You know, you start getting yourself farther ahead, and that you really can't do that as a pitcher. You might do that as an offensive batter, or you know, thinking about a bullpen. But as a starter, you're really going. It's going to be the slowest game you ever pitch. It's going to be the most tired you've ever been mentally, physically. You prepare for it, so that shouldn't change. what I found more than anything. I never pitched a game that ever worried about my next start in the postseason. So it was my last. And you do that enough times in, a, in one postseason, you're, you're pretty tired. So you can take that approach in the postseason. It's a little more difficult to do that in regular season. Lackey in his 15th postseason appearance, his 13th career start. And his first as a Boston Red Sox. Last in the postseason in 2009. Last time Lackey was on this mound at Fenway, he went the distance against the Orioles. As Jennings hangs tough. Down the range of the ball and two strikes. 
that was a good start, but his last start of the year at Colorado against the Rockies at Coors Field, not so good. He gave up three homers in six innings. Got beat eight to three. There's always questions about a starting pitcher with such a long layoff and ten days of rest. Mackey perhaps showing a little bit of that rust. So far, just one run on the board. He's been able to pitch out of a jam. Big double play in the first inning. Longoria was at the plate with two on and one out. Got him to bounce into a five three double play. After the Red Sox scored two in the first, Lackey giving up the run in the second. And it started with the leadoff walk. Two and two to Jennings. Takes off. Jennings pops it up in the infield. Longoria has to retreat. Is out number two for Lackey. I believe he's given the option of whether or not he wanted to pitch that next start and chose to rest. Certainly, Colorado can mess with you a little yep. bit. That's not the perfect <laughs> scenario to, to pitch before your postseason, but getting the rest and staying strong and having your bullpens and getting yourself all ready for this start, I'm sure he's been doing that for quite some time in his mind and, and in the pen. Two gone for Delman Young. Longoria lead off single and he's still at first. Ryan, you mentioned David Ross having some, some concussion issues during the season, missed a lot of time for the Red Sox. He used to catch exclusively with one of those hockey style masks and he does not anymore. And I've noticed couple of other catchers who have had some issues with some bad foul tips and concussion type symptoms that have gone back to the traditional mask as he has. Young in the right center field that ball is well hit Victorino is there. A great jump and fetched it in the gap. Takes a hit away from Young scored a setting for Lackey. Red Sox have four runs on five hits. It was an error by the Rays in the first inning, a throwing error. Set up the first run. David Ortiz has homered for Boston tonight. Got RBIs from Ellsbury, Pedroia, Ortiz. These Red Sox fans. Myers at the plate tonight is 0 for 2. As Price misses away. Fastball 93, 94 miles an hour. He's fallen behind three balls and no strikes. Once Tampa Bay survived the tiebreaker game, they felt like their starting rotation was in a great position to make a run. This LDS as he walks Napoli on four straight. Moments ago, we spoke with Rays manager Joe Madden in the dugout, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Well, Joe, you're down 4 1. What's the way back in in your mind at this point? Well, just got to be patient at the plate a little bit, although John is uh, lucky is throwing some strikes right now. Um, we just got to obviously hold it right there. They've, they've had a lot of pretty good baseball luck so far with some of the hits that they've got, but that's part of the game. Joe with uh, David Price coming off that brilliant performance in Texas. Uh, what do you see from him tonight? Anything different? No, I mean, he's been pretty good, actually. I think uh, take away Poppy's home right now is just a hanging cutter. Otherwise, uh, they string together. They strung together a lot of uh, little things. And uh, But otherwise, from this sideline perspective, right here, his fastball is good. Um, he's throwing a couple cutters. I haven't seen the hook yet. Uh, I think maybe one change up, and that was to Ross, the ball that skimmed the left field wall. So, so far, he's throwing the ball pretty well. Well, and that game plan for David Price is going to have to start going to options two and three. He's got to mix in some some off-speed pitches here. It looks like the Boston approach to David Price has been really good. Aggressive, waiting for that fastball cutter over the plate. Johnny Gomes bouncing ball. Longoria on the run fumbles it briefly. And Sanders throws it off the facing of the dugout. So 
that will be an error on Zobrist as Gomes will be awarded second base. Boy, the Rays just keep shooting themselves in the foot. First Longoria can't get it out of his glove and now Zobrist has no grip on the baseball. And launched it over everybody. And that will be an error on Zobrist. And the timing just disrupted after Longoria bobbled it. Now if that ball hits the railing and comes back, it's in play and no extra base. But because it hit the facing of the dugout on the top, according to the ground rules, then the runner is awarded second base. So the error on Zobris allows Gomes to advance, takes a double play option away from Tampa Bay. Yeah, the timing of that play got disrupted by him not being able to get the ball out of his glove, which definitely affected the turn from Zobris. So one out, runner at second base. And here is Middlebrooks. Check out Dustin Pajola. <laughs> David Price. David Ross, I should say. <laughs> Middlebrooks. A chance to drive in another run. Austin just keeping the attack on. David Price had a three up three down inning in the second. But giving up runs in the other two innings and he's pitched quite a bit from the stretch. Early in this game tonight. Pick off. Price bounces it in. Nice play by Zobris to keep it out of the outfield. Thanks to Joe Madden spending a little time with us between innings and you can tell why he is the most confident manager and uh, one of the coolest customers in that seat. He just gives off that body language of you know, things aren't going well for David Price and balls that have fallen in play. Always looking at the positive accentuating the positive and his players feed off. It. There's a strike. Brooks did not agree. All in two strikes. Middlebrooks returning to the Red Sox in early August. Had a broken wrist last year, hit by a pitch, knocked him out in August of last season. It took him a while to come back. He wasn't effective early in the year with the Red Sox. He's the guy that swung the bat so well that he pushed Kevin Euclid out the door. See the Red Sox taking. They're aggressive in everything they do, even their leads. They're trying to take advantage of this ballpark and the different courts that it provides. They've just been on go since this series has started. And this is a team that we expect to see take a lot of pitches and work the counts, but they've been aggressive early and especially trying to get on the Fastball and cutter from David Price early in the count. That's not typical of the Red Sox. Price is a strike thrower, perhaps the best strike thrower in the American League. Average the fewest amount of walks per nine innings among starters. Two and two to Middlebrooks. Baines at two and two. I want to show you something, guys. Uh, sometimes we get critical of what the outfield umpires do. Watch out here in the right field umpire as Chris Guccione on his double play attempt by the Rays. He's hustling in to cover any overthrow over by the dugout. He was right there on top of the play. Of course, saw the baseball bounce off the roof of the uh, dugout. But even in this situation, the six umpire rotation, those guys, even on plays on the infield, have responsibilities and good work by Guccione there. Two and two. Middle Brooks fouls another one off. Just like players, umpires, everybody has somewhere to be on every play. And if you wonder why the umpires, the outfield umpires, Stand where they stand. 
and you see him in the postseason. Normally it's a four man umpiring crew throughout the regular season. In the postseason they go to six. Well they are there primarily to see traps and make the calls on traps. Balls landing in front of outfielders. The 2-2 two -two and Middlebrooks hanging tough. He's late, but he keeps fouling tough pitches off. Well, again, the formula has been, you know, he hasn't gone off the game plan of hard, hard and cutters, front and back door. Only one changeup that I can think of so far, and we haven't seen a curveball. So you're going to get a lot of foul balls and some fly balls off of David Price. We haven't seen much many strikeouts, which again right there is chart shows 90 percent some form of fastball or cutter. This is pitch number eight to Middlebrooks and a bouncing ball. Longoria looks the runner back. And a good throw for out number two. Gomes has to stay put. Bryce wins that battle, but Middlebrooks made it work. And now two outs with a runner at second for Stephen Drew. Yesterday, Drew had a hit. He was one for five in yesterday's game. Flew out to left field his first time up. A 253 hitter this year, outstanding defender. Last year he was with the Oakland Athletics. Marched into the postseason with the A's in a division title for the A's last year. And like many of these other Red Sox hitters, he's swinging away first pitch on Price. Got a good pitch to hit there and missed it and upset with himself. Had some trouble with Price, but he's not alone in that category. 0 for 11. Oh. That's going to leave a mark. Uh -huh. Give him the ball. There you go. He deserves it. His eye doesn't swell shut. Oh, oh. right in the chin. Could have been one of the Red Sox, might have lost it in the beer. <laughs> yeah. Always helps to bring a glove. At least he stayed in front of it, though, right? Oh, and to the count. And Drew able to lay off. Drew splits at the plate, a pretty dramatic versus right handers and left handers. He's a 284 hitter against right handed pitching. He's under 200 against lefties. But he stays and plays every day because he is such a good shortstop. An underappreciated shortstop, very steady. Most valuable position on the field outside of the pitcher. Nice working hard in this inning. Seven total, 40 strikes, so it's not a lack of strikes. It's a lack of swings and misses right at this point. We're used to seeing David Price. A few more K's in the scorecard. He struck out a lot here. I mean, in this ballpark this year. 20 strikeouts in 22 innings tonight. That has not been the case, and I think it's largely because of what you talked about, John. He's just not really using all his pitches. Drews worked it into a 2 2 count. Price had him 0 2. Charlie Gomes still at second base. He reached on a fielder's choice. The second error by the Rays. Put him at second base. This time an error on Zobrist. Two and two. And through in the air. Left field to Jesus at the track. Near the wall. Reaches up. And it bounces off the wall. Gomes scores. Drew on his way to third. 
An RBI triple. Five to one, Boston. These left-handed hitters in the lineup tonight came in a collective 185 average against David Price. And they're coming up with the big hits. Steven Drew, the All-American League shortstops and triples with eight. He just collected another one. Well, we talked about having everybody involved, but nobody was involved other than the left fielder here. Nobody came in to play that carom in case it happens and the Jesus has to take this himself which allows the triple an easy triple for Drew. Lefties are four for six off price tonight. Is that a play where the shortstop Escobar has to go out. Mm -hmm. It is. So a triple for Drew and here's David Ross shows bunt almost hit him. Only two, two swings and misses. And it was in the first inning, and Napoli had both of them. Other than that, there has not been a swing and miss, which, again, for David Price, he does get a lot of cold strikeouts because he has that backdoor cutter available and paints. Oh, that is a big hit. Two outs. RBI triple. Price had Drew 0 and 2 as Ross takes a strike. Adam Owen 2 has got the matchup in his favor the lefty on lefty and that figured to be the challenge for Boston tonight the three left handed batters in the lineup against this big lefty but tonight left handed hitters for the Red Sox are four for six Ellsbury Drew and Ortiz and they have hit for the team cycle Ellsbury with two hits a single and a double Drew. The triple a moment ago, and Ortiz, of course, had the home run in the first. That was a good at bat by Stephen Drew after falling behind in the count, hanging in there. Got a pitch he could miss the first pitch that he thought he could handle. A little frustrated, but he connected the, the ball off the wall. Two balls and a strike on Ross. And a shot right at Longoria to retire the side. The Red Sox using their left field wall to perfection tonight. It's 5 1. Back at Fenway. And John Lackey facing Yunel Escobar to start the inning. Escobar with a double just inside the line. Jumping on the first pitch. And the Rays put their leadoff batter aboard for the fourth time in this game. You see Middlebrooks playing well off the line. The ball wasn't hit that far from him, but it was hit so hard he couldn't react to it. Bounced off him and then into some auxiliary seating that I think is for photographers or photographers well, so it'll go as a ground rule double. Tampa Bay has had their leadoff hitter aboard in every inning but the third. Lackey's only one, two, three inning. Stranded leadoff single last inning. And here's Molina. Slow roll of the shorts. Steven Drew. Moments ago, we spoke with Red Sox pitching coach Juan Nieves in the dugout, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Well, Juan, just give us your thoughts on John Lackey, first year pitching coach. What are your impressions of him tonight? I'll tell you one thing, he's been unbelievable. Uh, great, great, great year. Uh, very resilient uh, to everything. Uh, he's been very healthy all year, which uh, that's, a, that's a big plus for him. Coming back from Tommy John and uh, of course, he's uh, he's pitched for us unbelievably uh, the whole year. Very consistent. Juan, you've had your challenges and you've done you've met them all. You've turned your pitching staff around from last year to this year, but you also have gone through some closers. You've had to have your psychology hat. You've had to have everything. How have you approached this pitching staff with all the different changes? I'm doing, they're, they've been unbelievable. Uh, the fact of of uh, Hanrahan uh, getting hurt and Bailey, uh, of course, giving other guys chances, and of course, Yurhara has uh, run with it. Has had a great year also. Tazawa and Breslow has uh, joined in as Andrew Miller got hurt uh, in L.A. But uh, the guys have been very, very good on, on that term. And they've, been, uh, they've been taking the bull by the horns every day, getting prepared. And uh, the biggest thing is that they stay healthy. And uh, thanks to Juan Nieves, first-year pitching coach of the Red Sox. And he's uh, put a lot of pieces together. The Red Sox pitching has been a big part of their success 
this season. They still have a very good offense, different kind of offense than their run in the mid 2000s. Of course, the two time World Series champion Red Sox. As the Jesus that got a piece of it. Lackey hits him, and Lackey is staring down De Jesus on his way to first base. A pitcher who wears his emotions on the sleeve didn't like the fact that De Jesus didn't get out of the way of that offering. They got him on the arm. He's on the point of the elbow, he kind of hangs over the plate a little bit too. That might have been another reason he was upset. So Lackey has given up a double and now a hit batter one away. And here is Will Myers and what a spot for him to deliver. Myers is 0 for 2. Well as well as things are going for the Red Sox and offensively they are doing everything right. They're getting a lot of breaks too on plays off the wall etc. But. The way they have hit John Lackey in the past, they are not out of this ball game by any means. A lot of innings to be played, and they're only down four runs. Lackey against Tampa Bay in, in his Boston portion of his career, nine starts, an ERA of 6-7. It's a 3-5 and five record, a 6-7-0 ERA. And he has given up at least four runs against the Rays in his last six starts. One run tonight. Tampa Bay has to get better with runners in scoring position quickly if they're going to get back in this one. Myers down the line foul just missed the bag. And the count will go to a ball and two strikes. It's really the first hittable pitch that I can remember Will Myers has had. They've done a nice job keeping the ball away. You can see the game plan is feed off of his aggressiveness he loves the fastball the majority of the pitches have been breaking balls and off speed and they've been away They're almost lulling them to sleep with off speed and then being able to beat him late with a fastball occasionally big spot one ball two strikes and lucky an inside move looks the runners back Throughout the year, the Rays struggled against Boston with runners in scoring position, hit for just a 171 average. In this postseason, in two games so far, they are 0 for 9. The two runs yesterday came on solo homers as Myers to right. Victorino is there. There is the second out. Escobar will advance to third. Runners at the corners with two away as we check in with Rachel. Well, guys, John Lackey was chosen for this game in part because his record is so much better here at home. And he jokes, hey, it should be the other way around since this isn't a very pitcher friendly park. But he guesses he just has fun with the fans here. And that's notable considering how the fans felt about him just a season or so ago. Lackey, of course, part of the uh, fried chicken brigade, but he really has rededicated both his body and his attitude over this past offseason. You know, he lost around 20 pounds in the offseason, and manager John Farrell was telling us he's come to simple what this team has done and its turnaround. The fans here have noticed we've heard some great cheering for him today and hey he's Mr. Fenway now guys. <laughs> That's hard to believe right Rachel. Conscious effort to work on his public perception never paid much attention to the media in the past as Loney takes a ball and that's okay and when you're pitching well and if you're dominating that's one thing but the link to the public is through the media and John Lackey has made an effort to be better in that role this season. And of course his elbow is all healed up. Still a chance to salvage this segment of his career with the Boston Red Sox. There's no doubt Joe he was a horse with the Angels and he was a big game pitcher big for him. game guy. I liked what John Farrell said about him today though about how he's learned to pitch at Fenway. As you and Rachel were just saying this is not exactly the best place to pitch. But he's learned to utilize right field here which is so vast compared to most right fields and he's been able to take advantage of it especially working with right handed hitters. Loney center field Ellsbury on the run he looks up that ball is off the wall. One run is 
Anderson and Escobar. Here comes a second run. The throw is late. De Jesus scores, and it's a two RBI double for the former Red Sox. James Loney delivers, and it's five to three, Boston. Rays are relentless. You never can count them out. And there's one of those sliders that didn't do what he wanted it to do over the middle part of the plate. And this ball was smoked. Left center. Of course, with two outs, you can get a pretty good jump from first, and they were able to score two runs right back in the ballgame. Yes, sir. Two in for Tampa Bay. Here is Longoria with two away. Loney's fantastic year continues. Two hits today at 300 in the regular season. Traded from the Dodgers to the Boston, uh, Boston Red Sox last season. And then signing with the Rays on a one year deal. Ball and a strike on Longoria. Longoria singled to start the fourth inning. Hit a shot back up the middle. He bounced into a double play in the first. That ended the inning. And a big swing. He chased one. Ball and two strikes on Longoria. He's trying to tie it up with one swing. Had a pitch to do it on. Had a count to do it on. Now he'll settle for an RBI single to make it a one run game. To the count. Longoria here at Fenway Park in the 08 American League Championship Series homered in all three games at Fenway. He's got this very upright stance, and even though he has a bit of a strike too, his head is very still. Real quick hands, powerful swing. And at least in my view, the most dangerous hitter in their lineup, as you just talked about. What he can do in this ballpark, or what he's done in this ballpark. David Ross certainly got to talk to Lackey about that. Yeah, no sense tricking him right here with a two and two count. There's a base open. I know you want to get this guy out, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. So you don't want to try to do something to a hitter and, and trick him. Make the best pitch you can outside the zone. Pitch tracks gives you an idea of where Lackey wants to retire Longoria up and away. Back out there he goes, this time with a breaking ball. And the count at three and two now. Lackey does have a base open at first. He's got Ben Zobrist, a switch hitter, due up next. See how aggressive he'll be with Longoria at the plate. He's the tying run. Two runs are in. And Longoria, a little half swing, able to check him. And he is aboard with a walk. First and second with two away. Shaping up to be a very tough inning for John Lackey. You know, guys, you have these meetings before the series starts. You have the meetings before a start uh, for Lackey. Uh, tonight I'm sure and you go over these the players who's hot who's not and who's the guy you don't want to have beat you and Evan Longoria has got to be that guy for the Red Sox and after that visit from David Ross it was obvious they were not going to pitch to him. So now Ben Zobrist with the tie run aboard and Lackey misses away from the first offering. Zobrist walked and scored in the second inning came in on the Delman Young sack fly. And then he struck out looking in the fourth. Homered yesterday, hit a bomb over the monster in yesterday's game. That was as a right handed hitter. Red Sox have been banging him off the monster all night tonight. Zilber certainly has the power to do that. 
nice play by David Ross. Keeps the runners at first and second. If he doesn't block this, they've got the tying runs in scoring position. Breaking ball in the dirt. See the numbers for Zobris against Lackey. Heavy numbers. Two. Zobrist, I know he hit the home run yesterday right handed, but he's typically got more power left handed. Two, two. Zobers fouls it away. Zobers hit 12 home runs during the regular season. Only one of those came as a right handed batter. John, the Red Sox are playing him to pull with Drew playing him way up the middle. And he just made a pitch away that he fouled off where he could have spoiled the defense by going the other way. But, if, but this guy's more powerful left handed, a good low ball hitter, pull hitter left handed, kind of dangerous to. Pitch to your defense here, isn't it? And the biggest thing is they're using a lot of off-speed. So you would think on an off-speed pitch, he's going to roll over. That fastball was for effect to kind of freeze him away. But the last-minute swing fouled off a great pitcher's pitch. I still think 3-2 here with the runners going, you're going to see some form of off-speed based on the way he's been playing him and to your point where the up where the defense has got a position. Loney and Longoria will get a head start with the pitch. Full count, two outs. Tying run at first. Overs takes a call and strike three. John Lackey with a huge strikeout. This is a big one. Loney drives in two with a double to deep left center field. Makes it 5 3. Now David Price back out for the Rays. And Pedroia will lead off top of the order for Boston. Third time through the batting order. For the Red Sox. I beg your pardon, Ellsbury leading off. Ellsbury tonight has two hits. Hasn't found the barrel with either one of them, but he has been active at the top of that batting order. Got a single, a stolen base. Went to third on an error on that steal. Scored the first run, then he doubled and drove in a run in the third. O2 pitch. All at two strikes. Neither one of these pitchers have been very good tonight on shutdown innings. And this is a big shutdown inning right here for David Price after his team got him back within two. That was the first curveball we've seen in a while. It might have been the first curveball of the game. 0 2, good, good place to put it. Whether he's got feel for it or not, the rest of the game will determine. Yeah. And Ellsbury lines one center field base hit. Oh, Jennings with that injured hamstring playing very deep, and Ellsbury three for three. And Joe, the left handed hitters in this Red Sox lineup have had a lot of success against Price tonight. And that wasn't the case coming in. None of these guys had had much luck against David Price tonight. They've had a good plan. I, I granted, Ellsbury had a couple of dink hits, but boy, not that one. That was a laser to center. Of course, Ortiz with the home runs. They've had good success tonight. That's five hits by left handed batters against David Price. And you just noted that his first curveball in a while. That could be a key for him moving on. I think it's a huge key. I think it's why the success for the Red Sox has been stay on the fastball until you prove you have to get off the fastball. The one thing that we haven't seen for a David Price type game is the ability to change speeds. We know he loves the fastball, but that was the first curveball. Victorino to right. Myers <laughs> makes the catch. And the first out. <laughs> He's smiling. Joe Madden said, whatever they say, whatever they do, just smile. He's getting a standing ovation. <laughs> so impressive, this kid right here. 
22 years of age, a rookie. Had the big gaff yesterday, but handled it like a true pro, and that'll serve him well as he continues on in his career. So one away. And here is Pedroia. Like he was going. And Price going through the mental Rolodex of moves and how he plans to hold the runner close. Ellsbury stole second in the first inning and it set up the first run. Molina did not get off a good throw in that first inning. Rays with two in the top of this inning. Sox are glad to see Ellsbury running as he is. Had a compression fracture in his right foot in early September. Just returned last Wednesday or Wednesday prior. He's been back a little over a week now. Came back against the Rockies on the road as they wound up their regular season. But had a stolen base yesterday and another one here tonight. First time Ellsbury has played in back to back games since August, at least full games. And he looks like he's picked up right where he left off. And that's why I can't explain how hard it is to face a guy like this and the carryover effect he has to the other hitters. When you've got him 0 2 and 1 2, you've got to put him away. You don't have to worry about him on the bases. He is. One of those great threats as a leadoff hitter that affects the whole lineup behind him because you have to concern yourself whether he's stealing or not. One man out. Ellsbury stays put. Pedroia takes one outside. And he's ahead two balls and no strikes. And there's the other part of it. He spent so much time on the base running aspect of it. And now you're behind on a very good hitter in Pedroia. Yeah, because you can't be in between. You can't be guessing what the runner's going to do and execute your pitch. You've got to make your move, make your mind up that you're going to play to the plate to make the best pitch to him. If he goes, he goes. But that distraction at first will affect some pitchers and how they throw to home. And Petroia lines one left field. That ball's well hit. The corner is a fair ball. Ellsbury flying around the bases. And he will score as Pedroia. One to it. Six three Boston. My goodness, Ellsbury can fly. And he hit the bags in stride. No wide turns coming out of second or third base. That long stride and big swing by Pedroia keeps it fair. But Ellsbury, of course, on the crack of the bat, had a pretty good look at it. He's going to be away from De Jesus and watch him go. Scores easily. Dustin Pedroia with three runs batted in. The single by Ellsbury starts to fit. And the Red Sox. With a 6 3 lead, they answer once again. Pedroia's first two RBIs came on outs. A sack fly and then a ground out, or rather a fielder's choice. This time a double, his first hit of the night. Driven in half the runs, and now David Ortiz with one away. Homeward in the first. He hit a boomer in the deep right center.
First and only home run so far for the Red Sox. And Price. In a 1 1 count, bullpen is active. Big Jake McGee, hard throwing left hander, getting loose. Perhaps David Price coming to the end of the line. Strikes on Ortiz. Exception of the top of the fourth, lackey. Neither pitcher's been able to have that shutdown inning and get a zero on the board after his team scored. Yeah, all the things that I've seen tonight in this game, it's hard to believe that that's only the third swing and miss against David Price. That to me is a telltale sign of the Boston hitters are seeing them pretty good. Price has Ortiz down in the count, a ball and two strikes. And a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Price comes back. He strikes out Big Poppy. Second out of the inning. Pedroia stays put at second. Well, when you look at one of the best hitters of all, DH, he starts him off, gets the ball in. Throws the ball down and also he pitch down and gets a swing and then just makes a picture perfect pitch. Out off the plate. Big copy went after it, missed it. Been a while since his last strikeout for Price. He struck out Napoli in the first to end the inning. Just his second K on Ortiz. And now Napoli will bat with Pedroia at second. Two away. Red Sox are having a great series with runners in scoring position. Three for eight today. Yesterday they scored 12 runs. They were eight for 17 at the plate with runners in scoring position. Best record in the American League this year, the Red Sox. A lot of talk about perhaps a little bit of rust. And John Farrell even admitted maybe the first time through the lineup yesterday they showed a little rust, maybe a little anxious, but they have been banging away in this series so far. Remember that shadow was part of the factor early in the game yesterday, too. Yeah, good point. The sun was shining brightly in the first couple of innings yesterday. 2-0 to Napoli. Three balls, no strikes. Rays get two in the top of the fifth. Red Sox come right back and answer. And Napoli looking for more. He's walked and struck out tonight. He was late and will foul it away. Loney will give it a look just out of his reach in the camera well. Himself in a 3 0 count and a green light, but couldn't catch up. with Jim Hickey who is on his way out the pitching coach and let's send it down to Rachel Nichols Rachel well guys Joe Madden said before this game that in addition to David Price's pitching the intangible that he was going to look at was Price's eyes he said when Price is on he has a laser like focus he looks him in the eye while he's pitching but when he's not he said he can see it in his eyes and he says that's when he knows it's time to pull him out 
And decision time looming here for Joe Madden. David Price so good in the tiebreaker on Monday went the distance against the Rangers. But the Red Sox have been on the attack tonight. Six runs in against Price. And you know he'll have at least one more batter with Gomes coming up. Certainly Jake McGee who's been warming up for the last 10 minutes or so is ready. He's not even throwing in the bullpen at this point. So the options are available and Madden's going to stick with Price. Well he's had a lot of fastballs early in the game that he was in and he threw well in. The away pitches have been a little bit wide of late especially to the right handers. He's not been able to get that pitch outside so Boston doesn't have to really look at that pitch as a weapon right now. They're making David Price bring the ball into him and when the count is right they're hitting it in the left field corner and off the wall. It's a big batter for Price in the Rays. They are down three. Maloney got him back in it with a two RBI double in the top of this inning. Goes, takes ball one. Tried to go with the change up there and he just gets underneath it and it fades up and away obviously not even enticing. Johnny Gomes. Austin has scored in every inning against Price with the exception of the second. They've kept him in the stretch most of the game. And a trick for a pitcher when you make that pitch, you go right back to it and stay back and make and execute a pitch against a hitter that's really aggressive, figuring he's going to. He's saying you're going to throw me a fastball. If you throw a good changeup right here, should produce a swing and a miss or a weak swing on the ball. I would counter that with this suggestion, John, and that is unlike again modern day hitters who like to dig in in the back of the box. Look where Gomes is. He is way up in the front of the box, and if he does, if he makes a mistake with the changeup or the breaking ball, he's got a chance to get it. He could set that front foot is almost on the front line. Well, David Price has to come into the strike zone here. He's down 2-0. You know Gomes is ready to hack. And a 2 0 and a swing and a bounce and a short. Escobar to second, and the inning is over. But Boston adds to their lead. Dustin Pedroia makes it 6-3. Six runs are in for Boston. Red Sox lead 6-3 as Desmond Jennings will start it. John Lackey back to work here in the sixth. Gave up a pair in the fifth inning on a two RBI double with two outs by James Loney. Lackey's given up three runs on five hits tonight. Jennings batting for the third time. He rifled one to center in the second inning and whistles that one into left field for a base hit. So Jennings. Two out of three and a lead man on for Tampa Bay. As we check in in Atlanta, here is Keith Olbermann. Keith. Thanks a lot, Keith. And a lot of talk about Miguel Cabrera Joe with his range being limited defensively and, and his base running, but it has to affect his offense and his swing. I, I don't know how it can. I mean, it, even 80% though of Miguel Cabrera, as the old saying goes, is better than most people. And uh, no matter how much he's hurting, just his presence in the lineup is a threat to any pitcher who's having to work to him. Well, the Tigers winning yesterday. Cabrera was one for four, did drive in a run. As Delvin Young swinging away early, cuts and misses. Well, that's every time now, first pitch slider, and every time he swings but finds a way to put the bat in, the ball in play, even with two strikes on him. And he's quickly down in the count. No balls, two strikes. And in each of the first two times after falling behind, he's hit the ball hard to right field. The Carino makes a good play on him back in the fourth. There's Craig Breslow getting loose. You figure maybe one more base runner. You might see that change. 
the leadoff man has been on base all night tonight. Tampa Bay five out of six innings they've had their leadoff batter each. The Red Sox have put their leadoff man on for the first five innings. Hunter takes off and Young bouncing ball is short. This will keep him out of the double play. So Young retired. Jennings ends up at second. And the first out. Now what's it really like in the broadcast booth you can go behind the scenes of what goes into a TBS MLB broadcast with the impeccable Ernie Johnson on a classic behind the mic powered by Ford. Watch the segment after the game at bleacherreport.com slash behind the mic to find out. That's a good idea they do that with Ernie because with this crew here I'm not sure people really would want to know. <laughs> Constantly at the food buffet or at least I am. Just like pitching in the bullpen right Smolty. Yep. Escobar a base hit to right. And they will send Jennings. The throw comes in cut off. The Red Sox had an out right in front of him. Well, Napoli boxed that throw. Otherwise, could have been a base running blunder by Escobar. Instead, he drives in a run. It's an RBI single, makes it 6-4. And the Rays are hanging in there. Well, with Escobar, he's seen three pitches in three at bats a fly out, a double, and now a single. So needless to say, he likes swinging off of John Lackman. It's hard to do, by the way, three pitches and have that kind of action going on. Another pitcher who couldn't get a shutdown inning. Tampa Bay keeps fighting back. Lackey looked bothered last inning when uh, he hit David De Jesus with that pitch. It seemed to affect him in the inning. And now I, more trouble here. And I still think Escobar is. They're going to probably do a little stalling here. Escobar is a candidate if he stays in the game. Lackey, that is, of possibly stealing too. You see how aggressive the Tampa Bay has tried to be. And uh, even though the guys have put the ball in play because it's a couple times for two strikes, they put him in scoring position. Well, the Rays. Just avoided a huge base running mistake. Escobar still at first. They had an out right there. Now Farrell comes out. And with Matt Joyce announced as the pinch hitter. The play is for Craig Breslow, the left hander. So Lackey coming out in the sixth. Four runs are in. And his first postseason start as a Red Sox. This is for John Farrell. He's got one of his better left handers. In the game in the sixth inning to face Matt Joyce, it's Craig Breslow. Yeah, one of the things you can look for him good sneaky fastball, cutter, and slider. He's a cutter at 88 miles an hour, and he's got some sink on the fastball. He's not afraid to attack. I see him pitching on the left side, and he attacks this right side. And he's uh, been a real good matchup guy against left handed hitters, and with the Tampa Bay Rays continuing to peck away. He wants to, John Farrell obviously wants to try to put an end to this rally right here. Escobar still his responsibility at first. Escobar with an RBI single. Rays bring the tying run to the plate. Matt Joyce, Madden's going to let him hit here. Lefty on lefty. One for seven career against Breslow is Joyce. Joyce is hitting for the catcher Jose Molina. So a change at that position. You'll see Lobatone next inning. But Madden playing a hunch here. And Joyce, center field. Ellsbury hauls it in. Big out for Breslow. That is out number two for Boston as the Rays go back to the top of the order. Scheduled hitter was David De Jesus, and Sean Rodriguez will come in. So De Jesus is out. A couple of pinch hitters for Joe Madden, and you figure Rodriguez to stay in to play left field the rest of the way. 
Not known as a power threat, but he hit a bomb out of here yesterday. First home run of this series gave the Rays the lead. Does have a home run against Craig Breslow in his career. Well, one other thing bringing Breslow in does is maybe put a crimp in any thoughts the Rays had of swiping second base. They might have done it against Lackey, John, but he against Breslow. You don't know if Escobar can get as good a lead or jump. And a bouncer. Drew coming in. Got to hurry his throw, and it is in time for the out. Breslow comes on. Retires the two batters he faces. 6 4 Red Sox. Catcher is Jose Lobaton. So Madden burning a couple of pinch hitters that inning. First ball swinging. Middlebrooks. Foul territory. Loney is under it. And one pitch, one out for David Price. Middlebrooks retired to start the bottom of the sixth. A oh, big inning for Price. He won't be out there for much trouble. So look at our BMW clear advantage. Small seed next hitter coming up is Stephen Drew. And you see his spray chart. An opposite field triple. A rarity to go the other way on his chart. Bubbles against the left handed pitcher and good at bat. And Drew had the RBI triple in the fourth. He flew out to left field in the second inning. And he pulls one here over to Zobrist. And two up and two down for Price. Well, it's amazing this game how it can confuse you. He only has 86 pitches. He's given up six runs, and he's only had one inning where he hasn't given up a run. Coming into this game, I thought Boston knew what was their task at hand. If they could have scored in two different innings, maybe they would have been happy and produced some runs like they did yesterday. But in this case, Joe, they've been all over his fastball in this first inning. Change-ups in a, a ground up. And to only have 86 pitches at this point with that kind of work, and those those runs it tells us again that Boston's been aggressive early in the count something they aren't usually doing. Maybe that was their plan against David Price who's pitched so well against them here Seems to be more aggressive. And one of the premier strike throwers in the major leagues price typically comes at you he doesn't walk many batters. Red Sox have been swinging early Ross takes a cut on the first pitch. Rays have had the tying run at the plate at least in the last two innings. They're down a pair. You can just tell. I mean, that he casted that curveball right there. And, and a pitcher will know. I mean, he's going to know the feel he has for a pitch leaving the bullpen. There's times in the game that you can work it in. It's a little more difficult in these circumstances. You work in between innings to try to get that pitch going. Ross has worked the count in his favor. Two and one. Backup catcher to Salt to Lamakia. John Farrell giving him the start tonight, primarily because of what he's done against David Price. And he now has three hits career against Price. And his effectiveness behind the plate with Lackey on the mound, although he hasn't caught Lackey much. Well, he's got a short step, and then he comes around with his fastball. Great leverage with his arm and arm swing. And today, he's just been a little bit flat on the arm side away to a right-hander, meaning it's taken him away from the strike zone just by inches. You can see our chart serves you that. Coming inside, and a call on strike three at David Price with his best inning. Three up, three down, six with a K. Rays are coming up, down a pair. After we're done here, on TBS. Breslow stays. Took him just four pitches to retire the two hitters he faced in the raise half of the sixth inning. And now Will Myers leads off. Breslow misses outside. Ball one. Myers tonight 0 for 3. He is 0 for 7 in this ALDS.
Evan Longoria do up third in the inning. Myers, Loney, Longoria. If anybody gets on, Zobrist. Big spot for Tampa Bay in the seventh. And you start to look at what John Farrell is doing. He's going into his bullpen a little earlier than he normally would. He had Breslow come in to get out of the sixth inning. Now he's in in the seventh. Tazawa is already loosening in the bullpen. You probably see him here in the seventh inning. Down to the third. Middlebrooks. Long throw and it's in time to get Myers. Good off speed pitch there from Breslow. Got him to roll over the top of it. Well change up he turns over almost like screwball action. And that pitch starts on the outer part and goes down in the middle. He has no choice but to beat it in the ground once he's committed to swinging at it. And it'll be James Loney. That was the risk Farrell was willing to take with the off matchup trying to get through Myers. He gets that out and now the lefty on lefty matchup with Loney. Farrell told us he would not hesitate to use Koji Uihara their closer for two innings. Yeah. And that hit him. Loney hit by a pitch. So with the matchup in his favor Breslow. Gives the Rays a gift. Loney is aboard, and now the tying run will come up. Fastball that he's trying to get in, rides and catches the back elbow. Certainly not what you want to have with the tying run. Rays' best hitter coming up. That's his throwing arm as well. Well, now what does Farrell do? Longoria coming up, representing the tying run. The race best home run threat. Tazawa is ready in the bullpen. Razor a swing away from tying this game up. On the end is on the phone to the bullpen. The bullpen's been amazing in that they lost. Hanrahan and Austin Miller, Andrew Bailey, and guys who were supposed to be the seventh and eighth inning guys, and in some cases, sixth, seventh, and eighth have moved to the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and really done an awesome job for John Farrell. And nobody better than that guy, Koji Uihara, emerging as the closer and the dominant closer in the American League. Loose on a 2 0 pitch. Two balls and a strike. Good pitch by Breslow right to the bottom of the strike zone. Like John said, he could be sneaky quick with his fastball, low 90s. It's even better after a good change up or two seamer kind of sinking away from you. Two and one. And he went. Cuts and misses. We covered the game in Boston and we saw Longoria locked in with every pitch. He didn't budge. Just a little bit aggressive here, trying to make something happen, going after 2 0 count, just missing a fastball, and then a hard cutter slider in that he was already committed in. Now he's going to have to be a little more selective with two strikes. Yeah, he was trying to, he was going to right field though in Texas. Three hits. He was a triple away from the cycle in that tiebreaker game. Breslow's come back. The 2 2 pitch, and it is down and away. Full count. And if you're Joe Madden, do you put Loney in motion? Well, he's one of the slower runners on their club. You'd have to wait a long time to make sure that Breslow's not going to throw over to first. I'm not sure it'd be worth it. Red Sox looking to turn two to get out of the inning. Longoria swings and fouls it away. Chase ball four. Longoria singled in the fourth inning, got a base hit back up the middle to start the frame, and then he walked in the fifth. Put Zobrist at the plate representing the go ahead run. Lackey struck him out. Rays have been threatening, but still behind. Off speed here, change up. 
takes ball four. So Breslow with a hit batter and now a walk. Two on for the Rays with one out. And decision time for Farrell. This pitch was so hard to lay off. You get such a good look at it as a hitter. That high change up that he missed with and you, you know Longoria wants to do something big here to try and tie the game up. The fact that he laid off was pretty impressive. But when the Rays can rally as they are right now without benefit of a hit. Boston's asking for problems when you hit a batter walk a guy and put the time runs on. So Zobrist, the switch hitter, will bat. A couple of strikeouts tonight. He walked. Those at bats came as a left handed hitter. First time in the right side of the box. He swings to the first pitch, pulls it foul. Oh, oh. Zobrist just would love as a hitter to go gap to gap here and try to keep the ball off the ground. But the way that you pitch. In this ballpark as a left hander is different than you would in any other ballpark. Just that one home run during the regular season as a right handed batter. He hit one yesterday right handed. If he hits one here, the Rays will take the lead. And it's over the shot. Petroya spins to second for one to throw to first. It's in time! What a double play! The gold glover, Dustin Pedroia. Four. Fantastic. In his relief outing here tonight, John Farrell let it ride with him in a big play to end that inning. Ben Zobra stranding five base runners tonight. And perhaps next year when replay is available for plays like that, that play has been made for centuries in Major League Baseball. But next year, you might have a chance to question that call and take a look at it. There's Price. Deal strike two and Ellsbury peels out. Trying to get the ball in and the ball sinks down below our piss tracks. Ellsbury, a three hit game. Drove in a run. He scored three runs. And a swing and a miss. David Price looks like he is locked in right now. Back to back strikeouts. Well, if you want to know the secret to being a home run hitter, check out Tim Ferris. He shows you how to knock it out of the park. Go to upwave.com slash baseball. I might make a comeback. Check in with him. Here's Shane Victorino. Take strike one. Price has retired five straight. Back to that case here. Greg Breslow of the Red Sox comes on to get the final two outs of the sixth inning. Hits a batter and walks a batter. But a double play to end the seventh. Bridges eight. Big gap for John Farrell to get the Red Sox into the late innings. Tazawa was ready to come in, but Farrell let Breslow stay as a bouncer over to Longoria. Two up, two down for David Price. What a great place to come for a postseason game to love. Big Lake Park. It's always been my favorite place. It's been a great place to come play. Good fans. Originally built in 1912, but it's almost like an event. It's not just a game, it's an event for everybody that comes. Really special. A pristine ballpark. We haven't had a postseason game at Fenway since 2009. Win yesterday by the Red Sox, their first win in the postseason at Fenway since the 2008 season. The road to redemption. They are calling it here in Boston after a last place finish in the American League East last season. Turn it around into the best record in the American League. 
Signed Pedroia to that long term deal. Placing a stake in the ground that he is the pillar of this ball club. Dustin Pedroia with three runs batted in tonight, had a double and an RBI in the fifth. September of 11, 5.84 ERA, 7 and 20. 012, 7 and 19, 5.11. That's a swing and a miss. Lomitone's got to hurry his throw, and it's just in time to secure the strikeout. And David Price locked in now. Six pit strikeout to in the inning, and now John, it'll be Junichi Tazawa has been the setup man for the Red Sox, and he'll start the eighth. Slow curveball, sinking fastball, four seamer at 94, and split leg action on his other pitch. Little pause with his leg, with nobody on. And Jennings. Fouls one back. Tazawa has been so good for Boston in this role. He actually had his time as the closer of this ball club. They've had a revolving door at least early in the season after the injury to Hanrahan. He can have some command issues. I mean, Jennings went right after him because he's only one for eight against him in his career, but if they're patient, he may put them in some good hitters' counts. Territory. Out number one. Game two here tonight. Game three will be in St. Petersburg on Monday. Taking a day off tomorrow. Take a look at the upcoming schedule brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. It'll be Clay Buckholz against Alex Cobb, who was the wild card game winner for the Rays. That'll be Monday, 6 Eastern on TBS if necessary. Game 4 at 8.30 on Tuesday. Off day Wednesday. Back here if necessary for Game 5 at Fenway. 5.30 Eastern in this best of five American League Division Series. The winner headed to the ALCS. Delman Young with one away. Oh, yeah. Tampa Bay down to their last five outs. Starting on with your control, Joe. This might be the guy you want at the plate. He's swinging. It's a good time to practice your breaking ball on the first pitch. Young is over two with a sack fly tonight. Little shot up the middle, base hit. Delvin Young is aboard, and again the Rays will bring the tying run to the plate. It's almost as if he baits you into doing it again and challenging you to make a better pitch than you made your first time. As Delman Young has really enjoyed this kind of atmosphere in the playoffs. It's way out away from him. Another slider right off the end of the bat. Had enough on it to get it through the middle. And now we'll see if Escobar swings at the first pitch again. See if he goes four for four with action. <laughs> Escobar has been swinging early in the count. He doubled and scored a run in the fifth, had an RBI single in the sixth, and the fourth consecutive inning, the Rays have had at least the tying run to the plate. Escobar's had some luck with him, too, three for five. You see the arsenal of Tazawa, that changeup is a splitter. That little hesitation by Tazawa before he delivers the baseball can be disruptive. He was highly coveted by teams as a starter. The Red Sox got him. Red Sox signed him in 08. Emerging as their setup man as they enter the postseason. Escobar does not bite. Because I would think an Escobar will be swinging early, and it's 2 0. Did give up some hits in his 70, or rather in his 71 games. Tazawa gave up nine home runs this year as well in 68 innings. John 
Farrell will go to his closer in this inning if he has to. He's not afraid to use him in a one plus save situation, especially with the day off, as you mentioned. A really, really good 2 0 pitch right there. I mean, that's as good as you want to throw it. So borderline is a hitter, you don't even know if it's a strike or a ball. Yeah, he got into that good hitter's count, but Kazawa made a perfect pitch. To pitch. Two balls and a strike. Rudel Escobar at the plate. To Tazawa with Young at first and down in the dirt. Three balls, two strikes. That looked like the one with the splitter type action. Uh, that's just good discipline and, and really a great pitch selection when a guy swings over the top of the low pitch, go right back there. And this time es Escobar stayed off of it. Now has forced a three and two pitch. The good pitches he's made to him though have been away. And with a runner being held at first, he's going to the right side. Falcao one away. Young stays put, bouncing ball to second. Petroya shovels it over. Drew to first, and in time, another double play. The Red Sox, two outs, one swing of the bat, back to back innings. Despite giving up six runs tonight. Price will face David Ortiz to start at Napoli, then Gomes. Rays have been knocking at the door the last four innings. Double plays in the last two innings by the Red Sox. Some big outs out of that Boston bullpen tonight. Definitely. It's still hard to believe that if you'd have seen or said that David Price would go eight innings or head into the eighth inning, you'd think he'd have the lead. Certainly not give up six runs, but that's where we're at. Tease down the right field line. Fair or foul. That is way gone, but it is a... Oh, it's fair! A home run for Ortiz! See if it's fair or foul as he sits there. He crushed it. Wrapped it around the pesky pole. Actually hit it well over and beyond the pesky pole. Uh, look how high he hit that ball. It was close, but called a home run. Two hits for Ortiz tonight. Two home runs. Red Sox up 7 4. Price is out. Nolan Arenado and Lonnie Chisenhall, and Ortiz gets him twice tonight. Now it's Jake McGee against Napoli. McGee, another flamethrower for Tampa. 96 on him. Up above fastball. Straight over the top. Puts it from the third base side of the rubber. And a high pop-up. Zobrist calls and catches for the first out of the inning. Our innovative stat brought to you by Nissan. And Mike Napoli typically seeing a lot of pitches per plate appearance. He's best in the major leagues, as a matter of fact. Seeing over four and a half pitches per plate appearance. But to your point, Joe. All night long, the Red Sox have been very aggressive, swinging early in counts, and they have for the first two games of the series, and it's paid off in a big way. I think it was just a setup, a year-long setup, because <laughs> they are kind of loose.
Johnny Gomes with one away. As hard as it has been for the Rays to score, squeezed out one run in the sixth inning. Had two on and one out in the seventh. And then the double play ball that ended it. Had a man on in the eighth with the double play that ended it. And then boom, big poppy. A quick strike giving the Red Sox a three run lead. The off days can disrupt the rhythm of a hot team, but I would look for Alex Cobb with more off speed, more ability to change speeds and location to maybe give the Red Sox a little different look because the first two games have been primarily fastballs. Matt Moore, David Price. And we talked about that yesterday about Moore having trouble even throwing his breaking ball over the plate between innings, warming up. Something against this team and this roster that you just got to be able to have your full complement. It's tough enough to face them when you have everything working. Love hit. Gomes. A base hit. One out single for Johnny Gomes. The Red Sox keep the pressure on. Now the end of the game is just the start of the story. Unguarded with our own Rachel Nichols. Premieres Friday night, October 25th, 10:30 Eastern on CNN. And Rachel will have plenty of interviews following this game. All smiles. Can't wait to see your show, Rachel. Thank you, boys. Well, the Red Sox rolling offensively in the first two games of this set. Seven runs on ten hits tonight. And a shot to right. A base hit by Middlebrooks. Back to back singles off McGee. Two on with one away. If the Red Sox go on to win this ball game, guys, I think the story of the game will be how much damage the left handed hitters inflicted on David Price. You're talking about the home runs, only two all year, and he gave up two tonight to Ortiz, but lefties were six for 11 against him. Two home runs, a triple, and a double. That just doesn't happen to him. And the three lefties that are in the lineup, Ellsbury and Ortiz, Stephen Drew, and all driving in runs. And coming into the game, they had a collective 185 average against him. That was the matchup advantage that the Rays thought they had tonight. Red Sox have everyday players as left-handed batters like Ellsbury and Ortiz and Stephen Drew. They stay in the lineup regardless. And they have come through in a big way. Big credit to John Farrell's bullpen as well. He asked Craig Breslow to give him five outs. He was able to get a big double play in the seventh. But an inning in two thirds. And then Tazawa gets the double play to in the eighth. Well, I'm a big believer in power pitching at this time of the year. And Tampa certainly second to Washington in velocity, average velocity for starters. But as we've talked about, velocity is one thing. Being able to put it where you want to is another thing. Complementing it with some swing and miss type pitches. And we just haven't seen a lot of swing and misses today from a staff that could create. Boston again, the best average against fastball coming into the game. And they have not disappointed on that fact. In the center field, pretty well hit. Back is Jennings. And Gomes will tag. He'll end up at third base. Out number two for Jake McGee. First and third for Boston with two away. With David Ross coming up. To your point, John, and against good fastball hitting ball clubs, it doesn't matter how hard you throw. Especially if you're not locating it very well. You've got to throw off the timing somehow, some way. And that'll be the task for Alex Cobb come Monday. I know to go on notice, but Ellsbury really has set the tone today with those two hits. Great pitches in, breaks his bat. 
gets a single, steals, goes to third to start the scoring, and then that double that barely reached the left field foul. Ross a bounce to third. And to second goes Longoria. And the inning is over. But big poppy with the launch. 7-4 Boston raise to the ninth. And the Red Sox bring on their closer, Koji Uihara. He's got ridiculous numbers, as you can see. From July to September, an 092 batting average and an ERA of 0.22. He jumps at the hitter with a fastball. Tremendous split. He's compl he compliments everything that he does in and out of the strike zone. Yeah. Just pours in the strikes. He's quickly ahead of Matt Joyce. No balls and two strikes. Of those outings, 44 of them were perfect outings. That allowing the run. Uihara strikes out Matt Joyce. One gone. Let's check in with Keith Olbermann in Atlanta. Keith. Raised down to the last two outs. Top of the order, Jose Lobaton. And this is his first plate appearance tonight. Came in defensively last inning. Lobaton and then Will Myers do up next. He's only seen Uihara once. The Red Sox and even mid-season they were still struggling with a the closer. Their starters were real good, their offense was good, but the one thing that kept them from maybe the elite level was their closure. And they have settled that in a way where he's been almost automatic. And the fact that now it's a weapon that Boston has in the pen. Two batters, six pitches. Two strikeouts for Uihara. There were some seasons where he was very average with both Baltimore and Texas, but last year found something. 175 ERA in 37 games with Texas. Game a free agent. Red Sox signed him, and then he has been a magic man here for the Red Sox. Will Myers, last hope for the Rays. Strike one. Seven consecutive strikes. As you see there, that little hop, that little, he really literally jumps at the hitter. The hitter doesn't see the fastball velocity for what it is. That's only 90 miles an hour. It seems like 97, and then you throw that split on top. That's an equalizer. Call strike. Oh, and to the count. He walked nine batters this year in 74 innings. Peace. Myers stays alive. Koji Uihara since July 1st. Ridiculous numbers. He gave up just one earned run all season after July 1st. 52 strikeouts, only two walks. Just doesn't happen that way in the big leagues. Yeah, my math, Brian, that's 26 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. Oh, and two to Myers. And a bouncer foul past third. Alex Cobb will have the ball game three Monday. Adams Rays in danger of going down 0 2 in this best of five. Hit ball knocked down Napoli to the bag and he's there. That's it. Koji Uihara the save. Ortiz goes deep twice. And the 
best team in the American League record-wise is up two games to none and a win away from advancing to the American League Championship Series. 7-4 the final score. Lackey is the winner. Uihara saves it. Pedroia starts two fantastic double plays. And the Red Sox, even with a four-day layoff, come out brilliant here in the first two games of the series. Well, I'll tell you, you can't say enough about their offense. They took advantage of every pitch and swung at the first pitch, like Joe said. They were a machine these first two days. The day off, does that cool them off? We'll see. Alex Cobb's got a lot of work to cut out for him, but he's been a hot pitcher for the race. Red Sox in the two games of the series, 19 runs, 25 hits, and Joe... They didn't even bat in the bottom of the ninth in each of these first two games. No, and they didn't do it against a couple of guys who are just journeyman pitchers.